for decades. The financial industry has relied on mainframe computing to handle the bulk of its workloads because of its reliability and security. But the question, is the fast expanding adoption of cloud computing really a major threat to traditional mainframe? Well, the tech giant IBM is focused on helping banks to fully leverage the power of data, artificial intelligence and machine learning. How can this be done while maintaining the highest levels of security, efficiency and portability by financial institutions where mainframes often provide the backbone of their business? OK, I'm not even going to attempt to answer those questions, but I'm joined by somebody who can help me. OK, this is John Dyingman. That's the correct pronunciation, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Fantastic. OK, there is a reason why we've had to get this right. But anyway, let me tell you a bit about John. He's an IBM Distinguished Engineer and General Manager, Global Financial Services. John, it's a pleasure to see you. Now, off camera, you told me that in IBM, there are about 300 distinguished engineers. So this is a very rare accolade. Indeed, yes. When, when did you get yours? In 2017, for work that I did defining uh, a regulatory framework around financial services computing. And that's work that we've used across many clients. Right, but I would imagine that framework is changing as well, so oh, nothing is static. Absolutely. It's uh, just, like, just like banking financial markets, just like technology, it's a constant evolution and it's a constant innovation, and we love that. Absolutely, because you, you are a man who likes a good challenge. Oh, no question about it, Juliet. No <laughs> question. Fantastic. I mean, look, everybody in the world has heard of IBM. If you haven't, there's clearly something wrong. Maybe you were born in the previous century, but it is an iconic brand. Everybody knows it. What is it today? Can it be defined in one simple expression? Absolutely, yes. So we define ourselves as the hybrid cloud data and AI company for the enterprise. We're a company that's comprised of technology, consulting, and a massive ecosystem of partners, software partners, and services partners. That's IBM in 2022. Okay, I want to pick up on that phrase, hy hybrid cloud. What does it mean? It's obviously part of a much bigger architecture. And how important is it in the context of traditional fin financial service providers? Uh, it's become an essential aspect of how almost every technology company is building and financial services are no exception here. The, the whole reason why hybrid cloud becomes very, very important is because it accelerates the speed with which companies can build and deliver software, and it standardizes and simplifies the processes around which that happens. And it lays out a platform that enables technology and software to run anywhere, but mostly around that notion of accelerating massively the speed of delivery of capabilities by financial services firms into the marketplace. Is that the only imperative for financial service providers? Is that, all that, is that the only thing they have to embrace in a landscape that's constantly changing? Um, absolutely not. They have many more aspects. So every financial services firm is reinventing and reimagining the experience around which their customers and employees engage with technology and engage with products. Every firm is thinking about resilience and compliance. Every firm is obsessed with ESG for all of the right reasons. And we see a lot of that this week in Amsterdam. And finally, I see massive movements towards the modernization of legacy environments. Mm, uh, yeah, because legacy technology, you're never going to get away from that in the conversations. But the other fascinating thing is, of course, data and AI. They are clearly becoming more important. So what are the challenges that banks themselves are facing in this area? Is there just too much data and perhaps they're not quite sure how to sift out the bad from the good? And how can AI assist in that process? Well, the context here, if we zoom out a touch, is that financial services firms are making millions of decisions if not billions of decisions every single day. They are decisions about opportunity, risk, and how to deliver their operations on an ongoing basis with the minimum amount of manual intervention or human intervention. And so if you think about the opportunity and the risk part, how do I offer new products? How do I identify a customer with whom I wish, wish to, to offer a product? That's one space. To be able to do that, uh, requires enormous insight about a knowledge of a customer, a customer's potential segment or micro-segment, 
um, their patterns of behavior, their patterns of buying, and their financial objectives. Alongside all of that, Juliet, is the notion of the potential for bias that's built into um, uh, artificial mm. intelligence AI and machine bias, learning. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very high risk uh, aspect, especially as it relates to in issues of inclusion. And we've seen some examples of that in the industry. And so the important aspect there is AI technology from IBM and others that is both uh, trans, uh, transparent and explainable, both in terms of understanding whether the training data in AI contains bias, but also being able to explain why every single decision was made. And so that trust and transparency is built into the AI we produce. It's an essential uh, for regulated industries. I, mean, I would love to have a conversation with you about bias in AI, by the way. It, it has to be a separate subject in oh, its yes. own right. We because we spend is... plenty of time on that. <laughs> we might just do that, so don't, don't you worry about that. But I mean, look, what we're talking about here is the role of automation in corporate structures, because clearly it has changed. There is the pressure to keep up, but the question has to be for every financial institution, regardless of its size, how can you leverage that capability, but also do it in a way that's actually quite responsible. And are there examples that you've come across in your role where it's really working, where it can set a, a really powerful marker? Oh, no question about it. So uh, data is the leading edge to what we do on automation. Automation without, uh, without insight uh, is just um, the, the automation of an existing business process. It's not necessarily the optimization of or infusion of AI decisioning into making a business process simpler. So if we think about onboarding a customer, a great example where automation is front and center, it can, it can be a very frictionful process that, that is both difficult for customers and difficult for employees of a financial services firm. The more that we can infuse that business process with the knowledge that we take from AI systems about what we know of that customer already and what we expect or anticipate that customer will need, the more we can use, um, we can optimize an automated process, take steps out of it, make it simpler, reduce the friction and take out the operational expense. And so that's why this notion of AI and automation go together. One of the other small pieces of this, Juliet, is that within a hybrid cloud environment, there are many, many, many moving parts, more than maybe a human by themselves can manage. And so we want AI to watch over all of the operation and identify trouble, identify areas of so trouble, such as something not working, but equally find out how to op optimize an environment, for example, so that its environmental footprint is shrunk to the, to the necessary amount. Uh, and then we're not over consuming resources. All of those steps of operation are AI infused and they're essential to any business now. Well, that's interesting that you can use the AI to actually address the ESG issue. Oh, yeah. And at the same time, what, what you appear to be saying is, look, you can't rule out the human completely because this is the area that we always get into with AI. Will the machines actually take over so that we don't need the people because their rate of efficiency, because of the way they're programmed, means they can be one step ahead potentially of the humans. You cut out the error rate. You, you're absolutely right. Humans are unique in their expertise. Machines and artificial intelligence are there simply to augment human expertise, not to replace it. And I hope that never happens. Well, I hope it never happens, otherwise it does me out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> or it could actually do you out of a job That's as well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that balance. John, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you. And I'm sure that at some point we will talk about um, you know, AI and the metaverse, etc. But away from the Cyborg Studio, over a drink later. Delighted to see you. Thank Fan you, Juliet. Fantastic.